Hello everyone. I hope everyone's had a good week. We were off last week from the Thursday Night Lives, but we are back this week and it's going to be a wicked episode. I have Missy Bo Kearns, who currently plays for Liverpool, uh, joining us. She's literally just joined, as I said her name, so we're going to wait for Missy to send a request. She's already sent a request. That's a bit. She's absolutely smashed it. She should be coming in about now. Yes. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm not too bad, thank you. Have you had a good day? Yeah, not bad. Have you? Yeah, busy. Just uh, doing bits and bobs here and there. Were you training today or was it a day off? Day off today. Is it a day off every Thursday? Mm, unless we've got like a midweek game and stuff, but majority ah, Thursdays so, are off. So it felt it felt well on a good day for me to ask you to jump on a live because there's no training to... No, no mess, no other things to do, just chilling. Love that. So for anyone who, who doesn't know who you are, and I'd be super surprised if they didn't because your name has been everywhere with the performances you've been, you've been giving out this season and the season before. Can you just give a little introduction to yourself? So your name, your position and the team that you play for. Hi everyone, I'm Missy Bo Cairns. I'm a central midfielder for Liverpool Women. Love that. And how long have you been at Liverpool? Oh, I think she's froze there. One sec, we'll get her back in. Let's see if we can get her back in. So she done a she done an introduction. And then it jumped off. Right, let's see if we can get Missy back in. We know who she is, no introduction needed. Some some people might not, so we've got to cover all the bases. Has she frozen? Let's see if we can add her back in. I've sent Missy a request, so hopefully we can get her back in. And she sent one as well. I'm back. back. <laughs> Don't know what We're happened. Back. Back. I'm no back. No idea. Back do, with the do you know what you can? You can never predict it with with Wi-Fi and and doing stuff online. So it's always it's okay, me. Nancy. <laughs> Someone's just said, it's all right, Nancy, no panicking. We will wait with you. I, I, weren't, I weren't panicking. I weren't panicking. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Need to start Don't paying the bills. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. So, um, yeah, you give a little introduction to yourself. How long have you been at Liverpool now? I signed when I was eight, so 12 years. So you are literally Liverpool through and through, aren't you? Yeah, I've always been a Liverpool fan and... There's not another team that I'd want to play for, really. Yeah. Like, it's the and, team I adore. And obviously, you said growing up, like, you've always been a Liverpool fan. I think I always banter you about, like, Liverpool and Everton and always, always, always try and... Let's try and not give you go over there. <laughs> <laughs> try and give you a bit of stick. Hopefully, she gets back. I think it's frozen again. Let me see what's happening there. Where's she gone? Right, we're gonna get her back in. Third time lucky. Third time lucky. I've got full bars, I don't know what's <laughs> happened. <laughs> It's all right. Or <laughs> I don't know what's happening, but it's it's like it's kicked you out like three, Third well, time. two times now. It's um, lucky. Yeah, we got this. So, um, yeah, growing up, obviously, you supported Liverpool and they've always been your team. Was it always, for you, was it always, I want to be a footballer and when I when I do play, I'm going to play for Liverpool and, and, and that's it. That's, that's my dream. Yeah, I think when I found out that I could play, professionally then I didn't want to do anything else and I didn't have my mind on doing anything else and when I signed for Liverpool I had trials with Liverpool and Everton and I got selected by both but there was only yeah. one team that I'd obviously have picked and it was Liverpool yeah was was Everton did you do that just for a backup just in case because you wanted to play so bad but ultimately it was always Liverpool I'll be honest, I got trials for Everton first and then when I was doing them, I then got 
asked to do Liverpool ones. So at the time, I didn't even know that there was Liverpool. So ah. it was just like, I just done it because I thought there was no other opportunity. And then as soon as I knew there was Liverpool, it was like, I got selected by them, but I was always going to pick at Liverpool. And when you did get selected for Liverpool and you got through the trials, what did it mean to to your family? What, what, how, like, I can't even imagine. I bet it was just absolute scenes in, like, the Kearns household. Yeah, everyone was made up and, like, well, the majority of them said, like, it opened their eyes up because they were oh, just wow. used to, like, Sunday league football with the boys yeah. or whatever. And, it opened their eyes up. They realised that I could, if I go far, I could get a career in football. And I think that's the positive side of it. Like, we was narrow-minded. We thought that there was nowhere further I could go than playing with the boys, do you know what I mean? And then eventually we found out that I could. Love that. And for you, was it always you wanted to be one of those players that was involved in scoring goals and also assisting goals? Were you always... At the at the attacking half of the pitch, or did you did you experiment a little bit? Yeah, I've always been like an attacking player. I think under 15s though, I got moved to like a defensive midfield role. Yeah, and like I can play there, and I don't mind like every now and then playing there. But I think like I've got more to my game attacking wise. Yeah, and yeah, I used to love playing attacking when I was a kid. Score a few. <laughs> Double figures sometimes. <laughs> was it ever one of those ones where I know when I was growing up and I like I played up front and I was like, I'm only playing up front. Um my mum or my dad or my uncle used to be like, if every time you score a goal we'll give you a fiver. Did you did you ever have that? <laughs> yeah. And then I got it got to a stage where then they were like, not no more. <laughs> <laughs> we can't be doing it. <laughs> We've got bills to pay. <laughs> Yeah, you got you got the the Wi-Fi bill to pay, and obviously, like. <laughs> um. Now, like, I'm quite a competitive person, so if I can yeah. bring anything like little competition and stuff into yeah. things, I still do it now, like I did when I was a kid, and. Yeah. Yeah, I think I used to love that. Wish they still done it now. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a way. It, it's something that keeps you motivated as well, and it you have a bit more fun with it, do you know what I mean? So it's not, obviously what you do is so serious. Like, don't get me wrong, everyone that plays football, they absolutely love it. Like, it's their favourite thing to do. And especially if you're a professional, you're in such a privileged role to be playing it. But it has to be taken seriously because although it's a privilege and you love it and you're having fun, it is ultimately your job. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think the love comes first and then the yeah. job comes second. I think especially in the women's game. Yeah, I think I think I've come into the game at a brilliant time. It's growing every year. The yeah. publicity is getting massive. But say like the older generation who are still playing now, they used to play for and probably pay their own subs 10, 15 yeah. years ago. Yeah. Used to pay for their own travel, their own kit. And it just shows that it's because of a love for football, not just for the job. But it's nice to see that it's growing in the sense of you're getting both now. Yeah, definitely. I think one of my favourite things about the women's game is that I genuinely can like feel how much love is in the game from each and every person that plays the game. I'm not saying it's not in the men's game, but I'm saying because I'm yeah. in and around the women's game I can, and I'm at games and I'm there all the time, I can genuinely feel it. It's like if we talk about one of your teammates, Rachel Furness, for example, like the passion literally just beams out of her. The passion oh, and the love for the game. She lives for it. Like, it's, it's unbelievable. She's a great character to be around every day in the change room. Like, she's so experienced. Yeah. She's, she's had it not nice. She's had it nice. And, like, she deserves everything she's achieved. And she got Northern Ireland to the Euro finals yeah. this year. Yeah, I know, which is, which is going to be amazing. Talking about the Euros, how excited are you for the Euros? Like, obviously, it's on home turf. I'm, I'm sure you're going to be you're going to be at a few games supporting. Yeah, I think I'll get to a few, and it's great. As I said, it's in England. The fan base in England for women's football is going up and up, and I think it's going to be unreal atmosphere, and I think a lot of people who wouldn't open their eyes to women's football are going to open their eyes up this yeah, summer. Definitely. And talking about a fan base and fan bases, Obviously, I was at the uh, London City game versus Liverpool the other day. 
first things first, can you just let everyone know you're right? Because when I told people you were coming on a live with me, honestly, all the messages were like, is Missy okay? She didn't play the other day. Is she all right? Is she all right? So can you just confirm that you're all right for everyone that was asking? Yeah, I'm all right. I trained yesterday. I'm back. <laughs> there we go. She's back. So, so <laughs> people... the longest week of my life. <laughs> But yeah, back to um, fan bases. I was at the London City Lionesses game versus Liverpool um, last week. It was a great game. But the thing that stood out to me the most, and I don't think I'd ever realised it before, but the Liverpool women's fans, their commitment is incredible, isn't it? Like, they bought their own bus down and travelled down to London. Like, it's not, a, it's not a short journey either. Like, how important are the fan base to, to the team? Look what they've done, especially this season, has been incredible. Yeah. Every away game, they're organising a coach, they're all coming down. And every game, like, I'm being deadly serious, home and away, we've had more fans on away games than the home team. And it's, like, great to see. Yeah. Like, people are going out the way, spending the day. But that, and we've, oh, with that, we've got to perform for them. And... Yeah. I think the biggest thing of it, like, it's a mix of people who come and they're all great and we couldn't have got where we are this season so far without them. Like, yeah. they've got such a big impact on us and not only us, I think in Liverpool itself, football club fans have got a big impact and yeah. it's nice that it's happening on the women's side and not only the men's side. Yeah, definitely. Like, I genuinely felt like the Liverpool fans were there, were like through and through Liverpool, so it wasn't... Liverpool men or Liverpool women, it was it was just I'm there to support Liverpool. Yeah. Like they were singing, they were shout, uh, <laughs> shouting, they were chanting. Like there was there was every element to it. And another thing that I genuinely just had so much time for was uh, the young boys, the young girls, like the the women, the men that were there. Everyone just wanted to get a picture or get an autograph with like all of the girls, like even yourself. Like people were crowding you, and I was like, wow, like she's like a celebrity, like it's mad. <laughs> But wouldn't go that far. <laughs> but every single every single player literally stayed and made sure they gave their time to every single supporter that that wanted to talk to them. Like, and I'm gonna assume you lot do that every single game, right? Yeah, I think what they do for us doesn't go unnoticed. Like yeah. you notice that you come to one game and you see what they were yeah. like. Like, so I think it's important we give our time back to them. It's yeah, it's nothing to take. 20 minutes half an hour out our day to thank people for coming to watch us get pictures and stuff like they put a smile on our faces coming to watch us so now it's time for us to put a smile on theirs definitely yeah like you could you could feel it i think as i said for me when i saw it it genuinely just even talking about it now it made me smile so much and i think it's an element that is so beautiful in the women's game that you can get so close to the fans can get close to the players and the players can get co close to the fans and you can build like a genuine relationship and you see them week in week out so they don't just become like a person in the crowd you you genuinely get to know who they are yeah i think there's a few fans who like i've got proper pally with there's a little boy daniel and he tells everyone if say if i'm speaking to someone else like saying oh thanks for coming whatever he runs over and says i'm a number one fan <laughs> And he's a boss kid. He comes to every game, home and away. And is he, he went a young Liverpool lad? Yeah. Um. And he went. He got tickets in the ballot to go to the final. And he was messaging me saying, "I'm gonna miss the game. I'm gonna miss the game. What am I gonna do? Because <laughs> we have to miss our game. Oh, he's boss kid. He doesn't miss a game. Ah, oh, that's so lovely. And uh, talking about like football and fans. Da -da 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 we spoke about it earlier, you're a massive fan of, of Liverpool FC and you get to as many as the men's games as you can, don't you? Like, you're there supporting as much as you can. Yeah, any game that I can go to, I'm there. Um, I think I've been going since I was a kid before yeah. I can remember and it's just been brought into me. So if I've got a day off or I've finished training in time or I haven't got a match, I'm bringing up for my season ticket or yeah. I'm, I'm going the match. Yeah, and uh, we've got to, we've got to talk about kits because the kits that you lot have this season, I'm a big fan. I'm gonna be honest, I like it. But I want to know out of the kits that you lot have this season, which one's your favourite? The red, the red one, or the white red, or the white yellow wasp. 
Really? Yeah. I think the red's just signature, isn't it? Liverpool red makes sense. Yeah, but I do love the white one, you know. White's always clean, isn't it? But then, like, yeah. not that you have got one, but an all black kit is also very clean. Like, you know, like the, the new goals, Lionesses the goalies, kit. The goalies have the um, yeah. all black one, but I would never wear a goalie kit. <laughs> Just in case someone thinks you're a keeper and tries to stick you in goal. I've never had a goalie kit in my life. There's never a loud one. <laughs> someone might try to stick you in goal and you have to be like, nah, nah, I can't, I can't do it. Sorry, no. <laughs> <laughs> who's your um who's your favourite player for Liverpool that is playing in the team right now? In the men's team? Yeah. There's a few. But I think like consistently, I think Fabinho's unbelievable. Yeah. Like, he has such an impact on the team and some of the things that he does doesn't get noticed. But yeah. if you've no football, I think it's not always the goals and stuff. It's the fact that he breaks down the play to create goals for us. And yeah. I think he's so effortless and he's always in the right place, right time. He knows how to read the game. But yeah. then if we're talking, like, class, like, it's scary, Thiago and Trent, like their yeah. technical abilities, like scary. Definitely. And when you were growing up, like when you when you first got got into that Liverpool squad, then obviously you're watching the team anyway. Like, what what men's player was a player that you were like, yeah, I'm gonna be like him. I'm gonna I'm gonna base my playing style off him, and I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna be like. You have a guess. <laughs> you can't put. I don't. I, you I, have I, a guess. No, because if I get it wrong, that's then I'll pressure. tell you the answer. Have a guess. I think people should help me in the chat. A few people were saying Gerard, so I'm gonna go for Gerard. Correct. I smashed it. Smashed it. <laughs> it was you going on like it was like a trick question. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but you never know, Miss. You like you never know. It could have been there. Could have been someone else, and you just could have been like, no, Nancy, you're wrong. And I'd have just been like, thanks, thanks for your time. See you later, <laughs> Gerard. Absolute I, class player, isn't he? He he was a joke. I think the team and stuff that he had and around him and what he achieved. Yeah. Like the it's the way he strikes a ball for me. Like yeah. it's it's not easy to do. And like it's pure class to do it under pressure in a game. And, and I just like the way like, you'd run through a brick wall for Liverpool. And you were like, yeah, that's that's going to be me. I'm going to be the female Gerard. Yeah. So, so. But I do want to talk about, like, the season that you have had, like, the last couple of seasons. I'm not just saying it because you're my mate, but genuinely, like, you have been on fire. And I think <laughs> it's not only been on, like, social media that you see it, but, like, people talk about it, people... Like, when you think of, like, young players, because you, you're still classed as a young player, like, people talking about breaking into the first team. Like, for me, you're one of those players that's on my list that I can't wait to see break into, like, the Lionesses' first team. Do you know what I mean? But what, what do you think happened for you to just be, like, so on fire? Did you have something different, like, for breakfast every day? Like, did you start training harder? Did, did you start getting offered fibres if you get more goals? Like, what was it? <laughs> I think it was just the fact that I've been so hungry for something for so long and every time I step on the pitch, I'm one of them players, I don't care who's in front of me. Yeah. Even though they might be better than me, I have in my head, I'm the best player on the pitch, even though I might not be. But I feel like you've got to have that attitude and trust your talent. Yeah. Or what's the point? Definitely. Um, and I think the way I go by things is age is just a number. Yeah. And even though if you're the youngest player on the pitch, it really doesn't matter. Like, when I was first broke into the team, I, I found it not hard, but it's yeah. a different speed of play and stuff. But I think I adapted quite quick, which is good. And then every game I was just stepping, like last season especially, just pushing on and pushing on. And... I really enjoyed it, but this season as well, it's been a lot of learning and I'm learning every week. We're playing yeah. a different formation, so I'm playing a bit of a different role. I'm playing more like of a box-to-box -box role because we play 3-4-3 three, three the majority of the time yeah. instead of a 10. So I'm not getting as many 
goals and assists as what I did last year, but yeah. I'm learning other parts of the game which will help me in the future. And yeah. I think that's important at my age to be learning every week. Yeah, and uh, I've got to ask because I think he's absolutely class. Like having Matt Beard as a manager, what is it like? Because I've been to games and I've been next to him while he's been on the side. Like, I've not been in like the dugout or whatever, I've been like behind, obviously. And like listening to him, I love like his commentary and I just think he's a proper down to earth fella. What is it like play, playing under him? For me, he's boosted my confidence even more from last season. Um, wow. I think. He's one of them people who's really good. He's got the team in the right place and he knows his stuff. He's experienced and I think the whole team trusts him. And personally, I really get on with him. And like, he always helps me, gives me information, but he'll also tell you if you're not doing what he wants. Yeah. And for me, that's the most important thing. And because you've got to be on the same page. And as you've probably heard on the sidelines, he always says what he thinks. and. I can't argue with that. I like black and white. I don't like all the beating around the bush. Yeah, I um, I absolutely love it. Like, I think he's one of the one of the most entertaining um managers. Like, I've been at different games where he's been at like different teams, and I I've said to a few of the girls like on different occasions, I I'm just like I love him. I think he's great, and like he probably doesn't even know who I am, which is which is fine. But like. When I was at the match the other day, I, like we made eye contact like briefly because I was stood there waiting for you actually, and he just looked at me. He was like, "Oh, you're right. How are you?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'm good. How are you?" And I was like, "Oh, look at me making pals with Beardy." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's boss. Definitely in the team as well. It seems like there's a really good group of girls. Who's like your go-to? Have you got a, a few go-tos in the team? Go-to for which, in particular, like who's me? closest friends yeah I think we're a proper close team as you've just said you can tell but like Jay Bailey is like my proper mate like yeah. even outside the football like yeah. I've made a friend for life you know what I mean she's older than me she's experienced and I think she helps me in that sense but we're both completely different people yeah like I'm loud I <laughs> Still and stuff, and Jade's dead laid back and just. But we contradict. What's what's the word when you bounce? We bounce off each other. You're like yin and yang, isn't it? <laughs> we get. That's we what comes to my head. <laughs> get on like a house on fire. Yeah. And uh, would you would you pick Jade as your uh, your two touch partner? If you had to take someone on at two touch, would you would you back her? So or would she... you drop her for someone else? She's on your team. Hundred percent, Jade. You take Jade. Yeah. What about if it was football tennis and she was your doubles partner? Would you take her again? Yeah. Yeah. If you had to play a game of two v two on a five side pitch, so you've got to work, work, work. Who's who are you picking as your teammate? Oof. I think everyone this season's will jump through a brick wall, but yeah. uh, someone that always gives like 110% Razza Roberts, I think yeah. she'd do all the running. <laughs> <laughs> she'd do the running so you could yeah. have an easier ride. No, I'll run as well. I'll, oh, sorry, so you'll run as well, but she'd just make it a little bit yeah. easier. She's up and down that left wing, right wing back, sorry, like a... Meow. <laughs> Is she, who's the fastest in the team? Leanne Kiernan. No chance of catching her. There is a chance, but well, unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that it wasn't a, like, no, nah, she's so fast, no one's catching her. It was like, no, nah, there's a chance. If you're on a bike, there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's any bikes allowed on <laughs> pitches, so I don't think there's going to be a chance there. <laughs> Who, um, who's the match day DJ? You. Bringing all the tunes. All the tunes. All the tunes. Absolutely love that. And on a day off, what is your ideal day off? I think I could probably guess this to be fair. Go on. I was going to say, like, going to watch the men's team. Yeah, if they're playing, that's what I'll do. So I like my sleep. So on my day off, I'll try and have a sleep in. But my mum always puts the Uber on about nine o'clock. <laughs> so that barely happens. And then 
I end up going back asleep because I'm lazy. <laughs> um, then about 11, 12, I'll go for my breakfast. Then I'll just chill. If I need to do any running around, like shopping or whatever, go and get that done. Yeah. Then probably see my cousins. and. You're very close with your family, aren't you? Like... Yeah, I'm a proper family girl. Yeah, like I remember when... Uh... I think when I come up to see you in Liverpool and then you come down and we caught up in London, like every time you're Ziva with one of your mates or like one of your little cousins and stuff and you're you're big on your family, how much do they support you? About five or six of them are at every game. Um, away games, it's always my mum and dad. Sometimes yes. my cousins will come too, but home games, I've got five, six family members there, sometimes friends as yeah. well. Like, they love, my family just loves football. Yeah. I love that. It's so good to, to have the support and have people always backing you, isn't it? Yeah, it's great and it's nice to see that they enjoy it and because it's not me saying that you're coming to watch me, they, they ask me if you sorted those tickets. Yeah. Like, it's it's them asking me, not me saying, oh, will you come and watch? It's like it's part of their weekly routine now and it's nice. Yeah. Wicked, love that. Missy, thank you so much for coming on tonight and joining me. Like I've been looking forward to this because I gave you the call up a couple of weeks ago, but we had to we had to change it round. And it is always a pleasure catching up with you. Um, you know that anyway. But thank you so much for your time and just allowing. Well, I know you quite well, but allowing everyone who's on the call to uh to get to know you a little bit more. No worries, any time as you know. And thanks everyone for tuning in. Perfect. One last thing. Where can people find you if they don't already follow you? Which you all should be following Missy because she's a baller and she's just an all round great person anyway. Where should they find me? Yeah, it's not in Liverpool directly. I mean, like on socials. So, what do you mean? What's my name on it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Missy Bokans. Don't be spell it as well. <laughs> <laughs> nah, they could just go out. It's literally there. Um, it would literally be there. there. They can click it and follow. Yeah. <laughs> Missy, thank follow you so much for joining us. Two girls and boys. Love that. <laughs> Missy, have later, a man. wicked, wicked day and I'll catch you soon. In a bit. See you later. Bye bye.